Hello everybody, today we'll be talking about nitrosyl metal complexes and it's more of a revision and these are the subtopics of oh, my pen, these are the subtopics and we'll also be looking at some past papers. Just be aware that every university uh, can have different past papers and uh, every professor can teach things a little bit differently, uh, i.e. demand different amount of details from students. So this is some basic uh, literature and just be aware that this person actually developed covalent bond classification method. Okay, so this revision, we have uh, hybrid orbital uh, on metal and hybrid orbital on ligand. And with uh, Z ligands, uh, both electrons come from metal. With X ligands, one electron come from metal, one electron come from uh, ligand. And with L ligands, both electrons come from the ligand. So for instance, uh, L ligand will be water and uh, uh, electrons would come from the lone pair on oxygen. And for instance, with X ligands, uh, X ligand can be uh, Cl dot, i.e. Uh, Cl radical, okay, with seven having seven electrons and then the eighth electron from the metal gives cl octet and i just want you to appreciate that orbitals are functions okay so for instance there's function i know y equals x or y equals x square but orbitals are very complex functions some researchers even published papers in nature claiming that they observe orbitals directly but as i said orbitals are mathematical wave functions and you cannot observe them uh, you can observe electron density but that's that you can see often tables like that with orbital energies but these are just outputs from a software you can approximate homolumo energies using uh, ionization energies and stuff like that but please don't take it as a proof that orbitals are real. Okay, so basically X ligands are neutral radicals and L ligands are neutral molecules. So for instance, if you get some ligand that you don't know uh, at the exam, I don't know, NSC, uh, then uh, you just take the number of electrons that the, these uh, elements have from the period table. So 6, 4, 5, it gives you 11 electrons in total, that's odd number, so it's uh, X ligand, right? Uh, just to make sure that you know how to um, calculate formal charge. So let's take sulfur. Uh, so it has six electrons uh, in a, a free valence, uh, so that's the number that you get from a period table, uh, minus number of uh, electrons from lone pairs, that's uh, two, and then minus number of uh, bonds, that is four. So basically some uh, textbooks, they either say minus number of bonds or minus half number of electrons from the bonds, because that's uh, the same number, right? Four. So that gives you zeros. So basically it means that sulfur has no formal charge on it. So with L2 ligands we have similar situation, but basically we have two atoms that contribute uh, lone pairs to uh, to the metal. With X2 we have two atoms that each contributes uh, one electron to the metal, so that will be um, sulfur and carbon. And the difference between X2 and X2 bar is that with X2 bar um, there is a single atom that uh, uses two half field orbitals to bind to the metal, okay? So it's a one ligating atom, monodentate, uh, bifunctional. So here we have some ions, and if you like, you can assign MLX classification to them. So that's the time to pause the video, otherwise I'll show the answers. So these are the answers uh, straight from the table. Just notice that the oxygen ligands uh, in these ions are X2 bar. And if you know how, please convert now the ions to neutral equivalents, that is get rid of the charges. And I just want to mention this last rule, okay, so uh, x2 minus bar goes to x, and this is the rule that we are using as a last resource. So in the second example, we only have x bar ligands, and so x2 uh, bar minus goes to x, and then we don't have any charge anymore, so basically x6 bar goes to x6, and that's it, okay? And then in the third example, we have uh, x2 bar and L5, and then we have a 2 plus charge, so we're dealing with this uh, 2 plus charge using L ligands, so L plus goes to x twice, and, and then we're dropping the, the bar because we don't have any charge anymore and basically we are ending up with uh, MX4L3. So I was doing the, these examples uh, quite a while ago and uh, with the third example I was thinking am I actually right? So I found this uh, paper that I already showed you uh, on the second slide and there is a, a similar example. So basically we have me metal uh, X2 bar X and L4 and then uh, L plus goes to X and we have metal L3 X4. So um, yeah there's plenty of examples and if you would like then you can practice a lot. So uh, this is just a brief reminder that you really need to know what your professor is kind of like demanding of you because uh, uh, that's one of the uh, past papers and basically it says uh, convert the complex to MLX classification uh, but you also uh, are required to uh, change the uh, the charge to a neutral form uh, because like even logically a professor is checking not only whether you can assign a ligand to X or L group but also whether you can convert that uh, uh, charge into a you know into a neutral uh, species basically killing two ducks with one stone. So if you like, you can do examples 1, 2, and 4. In a second, I will post the answer, so please pause the video now if you want.
So these are the answers, uh, and I think I'm I'm right. Uh, if there is some kind of like a, a small mistake or a spelling mistake, or whatever, then then please let me know in the comments. So basically, that's that. So last thing, let's remind ourselves how to calculate En total valence electron. That is uh, sum of uh, electrons from the metal plus electrons donated uh, to the metal from the ligands. So there are two options, either through oxidation states or uh, through MLX classification. So uh, in the first option, we need to calculate oxidation states. So let's start. Um, so basically, when you have a neutral uh, ligand, then it doesn't affect oxidation state. When the ligand is something like Br, then you rip off Br as a Br minus, like uh, Br with a closed shell, okay, eight electrons. Uh, and so you basically, uh, formally, you take one electron uh, that formally belong to the metal, right? So that uh, brings the oxidation state to plus one. And then you take the, the oxidation state, so um, manganese uh, normally has seven electrons, but uh, on plus one uh, oxidation state it has uh, six. And then you um, give back two electrons from bromine, okay? So there's uh, the one electron that belonged to bromine and one electron that used to belong to metal. I know it's just formalism, but we just, you know, have to get on with it. And then 10 electrons uh, from Cl because we have uh, five of these and that gives us 18 electrons. And then we have MLX classification, so we have uh, MXL5, uh, so we have seven electrons from manganese and one electron from bromine, right, because it's X ligand, and then 10 electrons from uh, CO because it's five of them, and then again uh, 18 electrons. 99% you, uh, you'll get uh, the same answers from both uh, methods. There's something like uh, MNO4 minus that will give you a different um, number of electrons, but I guess that's a, for a different video. So please don't confuse yourself. Uh, basically, uh, the MLX classification was developed so that to uh, omit oxidation states because sometimes oxidation states are just not, um, shall I say, useful. So for instance, let's look at uh, these compounds. We have uh, methane, ethane, and salada, very similar molecules, but the oxidation state jumps from minus four to minus three to zero. I mean, um, they, sh they should be in principle similar because these molecules have similar properties. So why would it, you know, what, what would be the difference? So that's why organic chemists don't uh, use oxidation states. And if you take organic molecules and, and stuck on the metal as a, as a ligand, uh, then again you will have problems uh, with oxidation states. So MLX just allows you to omit that and then you can uh, classify uh, the total number of electrons, e EN, um, and develop some rules. And also you can classify reactions. So for instance, if you don't know whether you performed oxidation or a reduction because you can't assign um, oxidation uh, state unambiguously, then obviously you will not be able to draw any, you know, conclusions, uh, you will not be able to see any trends. And with MLX classification, you can do that. So that's kind of like a chart which uh, can um, show you what uh, reactions you've been performing. Uh, so for instance, in this reaction, uh, we uh, added uh, 2x ligand and we expelled L ligand. So it gives us replacement addition uh, reaction. So providing that a reaction is elementary, that is made of one step, you will be able to find it on this chart. And if it's composite reaction that is made of many steps, then most likely you will not be able to place it on the chart. But the main message is don't mess up with the oxidation states when you do MLX classification.